Hello, I'm Joe McEntee, Group Editor at IOP Publishing, and I'm here in San Francisco to talk to Brian Pogue, Professor of Engineering at Dartmouth College, New Hampshire, about the future of lasers in medicine. Thanks for joining us, Brian. Thank you for asking me. It's my pleasure. One of your core research themes at Dartmouth is uh, the fusion of laser-based imaging and spectroscopic techniques with established clinical imaging technologies like MRI and CT. What are the paybacks of this multimodal approach in real-world clinical applications? Well, the, the payback will be in the ability to do molecular imaging. And, and you know, 90-95% of what we do in the imaging world in cancer is structural. So we image structures, we image features that uh, are static. And, and so, but many, many tumors that can't be cured today essentially are are incurable because of a very complex molecular signaling in them. And so what we really need is molecular imaging and, and, and the way we resolve those molecules is through spectroscopic techniques. And so we're integrating molecular spectroscopy into CT, into MRI, into ultrasound as a way to, to take that next step in, in imaging and, and tracking tumors that are today incurable and hopefully in the future we will be able to uh, decode that molecular signaling and, and, and make them curable. And another focus of your work is laser therapy and, and, and specifically a technique known as photodynamic therapy. What is photodynamic therapy and, and what are its advantages? So photodynamic therapy is, uh, has been around for a while. It's the combination of a chemotherapy-like drug uh, that is light activated, so it's inherently tied in with laser development. And so you inject the drug, you uh, wait till it localizes in the tissue you to be treated, uh, and and the tissue then is irradiated either internally or externally with laser light. And and so that produces a phototoxic response through singlet oxygen largely to kill tissue. So it's a it's a light activated chemotherapy, and uh, it. Uh, is used in esophageal cancer, used in skin cancer, uh, and is in research clinical trials for things like pancreas cancer and prostate cancer. As a physicist, what, what are the attractions of, of working in a, a multidisciplinary field like biomedical optics? Well, I think the attraction is uh, for f people who are technically trained and want to impact healthcare. Uh, that, the medical physics is a natural attraction because you can use the tools, the, the quantitative physical tools and expertise that you have and, and to affect positively society through, through healthcare. And so many, many people who have a physics training are drawn to it for personal reasons. Uh, and it's a, it's a practical outlet from physics which um, uh, just really draws them in and, and, and they can do something that, uh, that is positive for society. Mm -hmm. What do you think the future holds for lasers in medicine, both in diagnostic and therapeutic applications? Well, lasers are um, uh, a major force in medicine today already. They, they, in therapeutic, in cosmetic applications, um, uh, they're dominant, really. In, in diagnostic uses, it's, it's large and really growing. Um, the they're obviously integrated into analytical instruments um, throughout the medicine. The real growth area right now is in diag in vivo diagnostics. Uh, the goal to take measurements in a physician's office or in a specialist's office that can be immediately used to to diagnose uh, early stage disease and to um, treat disease before it's uh, reached a, a level where it's incurable. What steps can laser scientists and, and innovators take to ensure that today's groundbreaking research makes it out of the lab and into the hospital? The real key is to develop a team and medical physicists just can't work in isolation. It's, it's absolutely critical to work with a team of you know, tumor biologists, pathologists, um, surgeons, radiologists, and, and get that, that widespread set of expertise and work together to solve problems. Because, again, a medical physicist is typically one piece of the puzzle. 
uh, but really to solve, you know, these are multidisciplinary problems and so really to do anything useful to translate what we've discovered, we, we have to have that team approach. That, that would be my, my most dominant advice to anybody. Okay, thanks very much, Brian. Thank you.